Hi, today I'm going to be writing some tests for an HTTP client library I'm writing. Hi, I'm Jonathan Hall, and I have been working on writing a client library for the Transistor.fm API. I host my podcast with them, and I wanted to do some integration uh, at a programmatic level with uh, their website. Uh, so I looked around, and I didn't find any good Go uh, client libraries uh, for their API, so I decided to write one myself. And today, I want to demonstrate how I test some of the functions uh, that I, uh, I'm writing there without using their live API. Or more to the point, really, without needing to use their live API all the time. I do use their live API when writing my initial tests because I, of course, need to know how their API responds. But then uh, I write uh, a much larger test suite that doesn't use the live API because that's faster and uh, safer and uh, doesn't depend on a network connection. So let's dive into the code. Uh, I'll show you the code I've written, and then we'll start writing some tests for that code. So I've already written the majority of the functions to call these endpoints, uh, but I haven't written tests for all of them yet. So let's jump over here to uh, subscribers. Subscribers is a concept uh, for a private podcast. If you have a, a podcast that's not public, not on iTunes or whatever, and you want to uh, maintain a list of private subscribers, maybe they pay a fee. It's not a feature I actually intend to be using, at least not in the short term, um, but it still makes for a great exercise in, in testing our code. So these objects I've defined that we'll be testing against uh, a subscriber is an object that represents a, a subscriber. It has an ID, uh, timestamps, email address, and some other uh, features. Um, and then a, a subscriber's query, which is the input to one of the endpoints, uh, because they use a, a JSON API, uh, sort of JSON API uh, schema for their, their API. Uh, I can specify which field to return and, and what pagination, what page to use, and how many items per page, and so on. So that's what this query represents. Now the actual function I want to be testing primarily is, is this one here, uh, which fetches a list of subscribers from the API. If I run the test in my suite, you can see the red shows up here on the right hand side. And the, the little sort of red background shows up on this code because nothing is testing it yet. So the first thing I want to do actually is write a test against the live API to see how it responds uh, and make sure that it's it makes sense. And then I will take that response and build it into uh, an, a, uh, an API test that doesn't require the live API. So let me open up uh, a blank test file to get started. When I'm writing tests, I like to keep my live code on the left-hand side and my test code on the right-hand side. Um, you can do whatever you want, but this is easy for me. I like it this way. Um, so that, that's what I have on my screen right now. I'm going to zoom in a little bit to make this a little bit easier, I hope, to read, even though that will make it harder to put everything on the same screen. Let's get started. Now, the first thing I'm going to run into here is I need uh, an actual API key uh, to talk to the live API uh, for this particular test. But I don't want to use that API key all the time, and I don't want the test to fail if I don't have the API key specified, for example, in my continuous integration uh, environment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for that API key in the environment. If it's there, I'll use it. And if it's not, I will skip the test, but with a nice little friendly message, so rather than an error of some sort, okay? That should be clear, I hope. Uh, now, if I'm doing this in many tests, I will probably extract this to a helper function. Um, in fact, I am doing that in several tests, uh, but for the purpose of demonstration, I wanted to show you exactly how it's done. Um, but this is great for right now. Now with that API key, uh, assuming I haven't skipped the test, that means the API key is set, so I can use it to establish my client connection. Now you see I'm calling new with two arguments. Um, let me just show you what why that is. Uh, in this case, the new argument, or the new function takes two arguments, the base URL and the API key. However, the base URL uh, argument is optional. So it can be the blank string, in which case it uses the default, which is what I'm doing in this test. If I fail to connect for some reason, if, if this fails, then, then I just fail the error with a, a fatal. But now I have my client object and I can make a request. So let's do that.
So for my first uh, attempt at a query, I'm just going to use nil. Uh, that should be allowed. I, I intended that to be allowed. Uh, I haven't written a test yet, so maybe I'll be surprised. And I'm using a, a blank background or a background context. Um, so let's once again see if we get an error, and if so, fail the test, and if not, then we'll check the results. All right, something is failing here. What's wrong? Oh, it returns three values, not two. The second value is uh, the metadata, which is like pagination uh, information. I'm going to skip uh, checking that for right now. So my test uh, is written. Um, let's see if it works. Okay, so the test fails. Uh, show ID is missing. So this null query is not going to work um, because the show ID is a required parameter. So let's uh, change that. I already have a package level constant uh, for the test show I'm using for my, my a test API key. And that's this test show ID. So that, that's fairly simple. Let's try the test again. Public show cannot have subscribers. Okay, that uh, makes sense um, that the uh, the show I'm testing against is a quote public show, so it can't have subscribers. Um, but this is great. Uh, that means that I actually have my first test case that I want to automate without using the API. So let's do that. Uh, to do that, I'm gonna open up another file uh, where I'm gonna put my non-live tests. Now I'm gonna open that on the left-hand side here even though I usually keep my tests on the right and my live code on the left, uh, because for the moment I want to compare two test files uh, and then I'll probably move it uh, to either the left or right again uh, in a moment. Uh, let's create my new test uh, file, or my new test function. Now by convention, the way I like to do this when I have live tests and, and quote non live tests is I, I give my, my main test, the not live one, the name test and then the function name I'm testing. So in this case, test subscribers. And then I just put an underscore live on the live version. That makes it really easy for me to tell if I get a failure in one or the other, I can I can easily tell which one it is. And just having a convention is nice. Uh, whether you use this convention or any other convention is of course up to you. Uh, but it, it's, it's nice to just be able to tell at a glance which test is failing or which test I'm editing uh, if I'm in my editor. Now here I'm going to establish my uh, client connection without any uh, values at all. And then I'm going to call set client, which allows me to set a specific HTTP client on uh, that object. Now I talked about this in a previous video about how to do HTTP client testing in Go. I'm going to use some of the same techniques right here. So I'm going to create a uh, HTTP round tripper or, or transport that sort of hijacks my HTTP requests and handles them with my local test rather than actually making a network call. But to do that, as I described in the, in the video I just mentioned, I need to create a type that satisfies that uh, interface. So let, let me do that first. So I've defined this type my transport that is a function, but now I need to put a method on that custom type that satisfies the HTTP tr uh, transport interface. That should do it. We'll find out in a second if that's working correctly. So now down here in my test, I'm gonna assign uh, my new custom client that I'm giving to my uh, my API client, I'm going to give it my custom transport to, to, for testing purposes. 
Let's see if I can skip that part. Let's do this. Boom. So, of course, this handler doesn't do anything yet, um, but you can see that it's compiling, so the type checks are correct. So, what I want to do now in my test is uh, put a response here that returns what I think the live API would return. Now, if you'll recall, the test we had a moment ago gave us an error. Now, I don't know what the response looked like. Uh, but we can find out because I've added a neat little capability to my uh, client here that I can turn on debugging and it'll show us some more output. So let's do that here. So here again, I'm editing the live test to turn on debugging. I'm going to save that. And if I run the test again, oops, I hit the wrong command. If I run the test again, it should output some more information now. And indeed it does. It tells me that I got a response body with a status of 400 and this was the body. So I can use this to replicate the same response without contacting the server. So that's what I'm going to do here. Status code, http.status bad request, which is status 400. And then the body I will put in here. I need to call not closer because uh, a strings new reader doesn't have a closer on it. And I'm using a new reader, a strings dot new reader, because I have the uh, JSON response here as a string. So I'm just going to put that in line correctly. Uh, now I've used back ticks around this so that I don't have to worry about escaping the quote marks and so on in JSON, which is a very nice thing to do. And this should be what I need now. So let me uh, just come over here to the live test again. And I'm going to disable this test completely for the moment so that it's not interfering uh, when I, if I have a failure in my non-live test, I want to, to see it easily. Now this test isn't complete um, because I haven't actually called anything, but uh, this should be sending, uh, this test now should respond with a functionally equivalent body to the one that the actual server sent. It's not identical. It doesn't have all the headers set. It doesn't have the date header set and so on and so forth. But my API client doesn't really care about most of that. So that's why I'm not worrying about setting that. If I did care about those headers or, or any other headers, then I would need to set those here in this response body as well. So now let's call the actual function. I'm going to copy again what I've done over here, since it's the same function call at this point. And so this time I expect an error. So the, the assertion will be different, but the, the call will be the same. And I don't even need subscribers here because I'm checking for an error, right? The error is already defined, so let's just do this. Now I need to write my assertions for the error. Um, and I'm uh, there's two assertions I want to do. Uh, the errors I've built into this client uh, embed an HTTP status in them, um, but they also should match the error message. So let's check for the error string first. Now, the reason I, I have this special uh, or the, this temporary variable called error message is if the error is nil for some reason and I try to call error.error .error on it, it's going to panic. So I only want to uh, call this method on the error if I know that the error is not nil. And then I will check the error message. So I'm going to create a variable or a constant maybe that contains what I expect the error to be. And that would be this exact text right here. Public show cannot have subscribers. Let's go ahead and run this test and see if it if it works as expected. It seems that it does. It's passing. But there's still one other thing I want to assert, and that is that I'm getting the right uh, HTTP status on that error. Now, the way this client is designed to expose that HTTP status is with a method called HTTP status defined on the error. So let's do that assertion here. 
the way I'm going to do that is using the errors.as method in the standard library. So first I need to create an error object of the type that I want to assert that the error matches. I hope that makes sense. Just watch the code. So I've created a type called HTTP error, or I've created a variable of this type of an anonymous interface with HTTP status uh, method that returns an int. Now I need to create a status variable first, just like I did with the error message. Because if I if the error doesn't match, then I also want to do the assertion, uh, but fail. So I want to do the assertion after the fact. So let's do that assertion here. Oh, and let's let's define what the status I want, which is HTTP status bad request. All right, let's run this test and see if it works. And it does. Okay, let's look at the code we've written. So I've added this new test subscribers live that doesn't actually pass right now, <laughs> but I've disabled it for the moment. Uh, and then I've created a new uh, function called test subscribers that has a single test case. Um, I should probably wrap that in a, uh, a separate uh, sub function. I'll do that in just a moment. Uh, because I want to add multiple test cases here. Uh, but I think this looks like a good start. So I'm going to create this subtest called public show, because that's what I'm testing, right? I'm testing the case of a public show. And then I'll move all of this uh, logic into that case. One other thing I should do is add the t.parallel call on each of these. And that allows uh, these tests to be run in parallel if I have more of them. And I, of course, I do have other tests for other methods right now, and I'll be adding more tests for the same method, and they can all run simultaneously to run a little bit faster. So I think that's a good demonstration uh, for this video. Uh, of course, my next step would be to add, uh, to, to get this test working. So that would mean adding a private show first uh, so that this test can pass. Uh, Adding a private show can't be done through the API, so I would have to do that through uh, the web interface, which I'm not going to do in this uh, video, uh, but I think you get the idea of how this uh, should work. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. If you learned something, hit like, and be sure to subscribe so you can see other videos like this in the future. Talk to you later.